What's up, everybody? Dan again, StockTrades.ca. Welcome back to the Stock Trades YouTube channel. Uh, if you notice something in this video, we're going to be trying something a little bit different. Uh, we've taken a lot of feedback on the YouTube channel over the days, and a lot of people actually like to see uh, snippets from quarterly reports, they like to see stock charts, and they don't necessarily want to stare at us talking. So I'm going to take this video and I'm going to do it strictly uh, based off of me and instead onto valuable information that you can look at and digest as I go through the video. Uh, the one most important thing, however, is we have no idea if you're going to like something like this unless you drop a comment down below. So uh, head down below, smash that like button and drop a comment to say yay or nay to these styles of videos. And something else we're doing over here at Stock Trades, we are actually in the process of launching a podcast and we are planning to do some YouTube lives. And one final thing before we get into what we're going to talk about today, uh, Stock Trades Premium, our prices are going up in October due to the addition of our Discord being such a massive success. So right now I will drop a link in the description to where you can sign up for Stock Trades Premium uh, at a big discount along with locking in your uh, lower rate. We never raise prices for current members as long as your subscription stays active and the same cannot be said for similar platforms here in Canada. So what are we going to be looking at today? Well, I'm going to be looking over two very popular Canadian companies here that have recently reported earnings and many of our members, our readers, our watchers here on YouTube are asking whether or not they are still buys today. One of the companies is a trucking and logistics company and the other company is a EV play that has struggled quite a bit over the last two years due to the pandemic. So with that being said, let's get started. So again, everybody, if you like this video, uh, head down below, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. We have a ton of great content and some huge changes coming forward, like I said, with uh, the podcast and potentially YouTube lives for both free viewers of YouTube and Stock Trades Premium members. Uh, so the first stock we're going to talk about today and is one that I own. I do not own the other one we'll speak on, but that is TFI International, Transforce International. They trade under the ticker TFII on the TSX. And a lot of people, because this stock has ran up so much over the last uh, year or so, are wondering if this company is still a buy. And to be honest, there are very few Canadian stocks over the years that have caused investors to really sit back and think, wow, pretty thankful I was patient with that one. And one of these stocks for myself, along with many Stock Trades Premium members, uh, because we highlighted the company in the low $40 range as a value play, is TFI International. One of the most important things you can take from the stock market is you cannot have a what have you done for me lately approach to investing. You will inevitably struggle. You will end up selling quality companies because they're not moving in price. And this is because some plays, uh, not exclusive to TFI, but many other plays can take multiple years to come to fruition. Many investors, again, they become frustrated, they sell. I've known plenty of people who dumped this stock because it wasn't moving anywhere over the better part of the year. But now with this huge launch post COVID, you're sitting on some outstanding returns. Uh, so what does TFI International do? Transforce International is a Canadian trucking and logistics company. The company operates in four segments. They have package and courier, less than truckload, truckload and logistics. So it's packaging segment picks up, transports and delivers many items across North America. It's truckload segment delivers items, typically on flatbed trucks, containers, uh, while it's less than truckload moves smaller loads. So the majority of TFI's revenue is generated here domestically. However, it does have strong exposure south of the border. And one of the things that really launched this company as of late, a key driver for the company's growth, has been the acquisition of UPS Freight in early 2021. Uh, this acquisition bolstered the company's less than truckload and truckload segments. As these divisions generated nearly $3 billion US dollars in revenue last year. So 
The acquisition also gave TFI International one of the largest networks in terms of less than truckload in North America. So this gave them more exposure south of the border and the market took the acquisition very well and TFI has been on an absolute tear ever since. Anytime that we figured valuations were getting a little expensive for this company, it has ran up considerably. Now that the market has fully absorbed this acquisition, does TFI still provide value to investors right now? And we'll take a look at the company's valuation. So it's pretty easy to look at a stock that has run up as much as TFI and immediately label it as expensive. However, when we have acquisitions coming into the mold and fast growing earnings, this changes things. You cannot look at just the overall price of a company in terms of stock price to determine valuation. I mean, we are buying these stocks based on essentially earnings and for high growth companies, we could be looking at growing sales. But if a company's earnings are growing at a pretty rapid pace, you're going to see stock prices increase. And it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, if a stock has doubled over the last six months, that it's overvalued. The market may choose to award the company a higher or lower earnings multiple. And it's important to understand that the acquisition of UPS Freight has significantly boosted the forward outlook for TFI. In fact, if we looked at estimates on how the company would have performed in the third quarter of this year prior to the UPS acquisition, most analysts had earnings per share in the $1.21 range. Now they're expecting earnings per share just shy of $1.70. Uh, this is a significant boost to the company's bottom line and is likely why TFI is maintaining its upward trajectory. However, on a forward-looking basis, valuations definitely do seem to be getting expensive. If we look to TFI on a forward price to earnings basis, this is the most expensive the company has been over the last year by quite a large margin. Uh, historically, the company has never traded anywhere near this range. In fact, historical averages on a three, five and 10 year basis have them trading in the range of 14 to 15 times earnings. So at over 23 times, it is looking a bit optimistic. However, this is a company that has been significantly undervalued over the last decade. And that is why you will see these multiples, the three, five and 10 year averages so low. So with TFI, I really think that, you know, the Warren Buffett adage rings true. It's better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. So although TFI is a tad on the expensive side from a historical standpoint, this might simply be the market reassessing what it is willing to pay for a company like TFI International. So in terms of analysts, uh, 19 analysts covering this company, nine rated a buy, nine rated an outperform, and only one rates the company a hold. In terms of price targets, most have 12 to 18 month targets in the high $149 range. But if we look to the company's history in terms of analyst targets, we can spot a significant trend. And that is the trend that this company's target price range is being upgraded consistently. In fact, if we look back to early April of 2021, the company had target prices in the $100 range. So these now sit almost 50% higher just a few short months later. The company has a double digit return on equity assets and invested capital ratios and has maintained these for half a decade or longer, highlighting the company's ability to take shareholder capital and turn a profit with it. Uh, exceptional management is one of the main things I look for in a company and TFI's ability to navigate the pandemic and come out ahead in a significant way due to prudent acquisitions and business operations is one of the primary reasons I will continue to be a shareholder for a long time. Is a lot of the valuation gap closed? I would say yes, but don't let that deter you from looking at this outstanding company. So that's pretty much it for TFI International. And we're going to look at another company that is currently still trading quite a bit below pre-pandemic levels. They're a busing company here in Canada with EV exposure, and that is NFI Group. They trade under the ticker NFI on the TSX. So, I mean, unless you lived under a rock in 2020, one of the hottest industries and the most talked about industries in the world was renewable energy and EV vehicle companies. Uh, it may have been strange to see a company like NFI Group, which is a manufacturer of zero emission and electric hybrid buses, take a big hit. However, there are a few things that impacted the company in a significant way over the last year and a half, and also some strong signs from the company's most recent earnings quarter, both of which we're gonna go over. 
So what exactly does NFI do? NFI Group, or as the company used to be called, New Flyer Industries, is a manufacturer of transit buses and motor coaches. Manufacturing represents a little more than half of the company's revenue, while its aftermarket solutions include spare parts and servicing related to its transit buses and motor coaches. So although this company is Canadian, most of the fabrication, manufacturing, distribution, and servicing of its products takes place in the United States, and as a result, it drives most of its revenue revenue from the US. So this is a Canadian stock that has some pretty unique US exposure. So NFI's aim for emission free vehicles should be a positive catalyst. As of right now, NFI supports over 35,000 heavy duty transit buses in service. Of those 35,000, just over 8,600 are electric or battery while 1,900 are completely emission free. As more and more evidence surfaces from the impacts of climate change, we feel political and jurisdictional movements towards greener forms of energy will be a tailwind for NFI. After all, the company's primary goal is towards becoming a zero emission transit company. So you might be sitting there asking, if this is the case, why did NFI Group not rise with the other renewable energy companies? If we look to most renewable energy companies, we'll see a pretty common trend, and that will be a parabolic rise in the mid to late 2020, followed by a massive dip in price once the euphoria subsided. However, NFI Group really didn't seem to benefit much from this at all. In fact, if we look to this chart, the company is essentially just reaching pre-COVID price points where another electric bus company like Green Power Motor is up over 650%. So what gives exactly? Why didn't NFI catch some of this EV renewable wave in 2020? The COVID pandemic hit NFI Group hard. In fact, in late March, less than a month before the virus rocked North American stock markets, NFI slashed its dividend, idled its factories, and pulled its 2020 guidance. Any one of these things on their own is enough to rock a company share price. All three happening at once, it did not look good at all for NFI. What was relatively a fast-paced, profitable growth company was now one that was expected to struggle significantly in 2020. Uh, it did just that, posting a loss per share of $3.37, and revenues came in significantly lower than 2019 levels. Meanwhile, a company like Green Power, simply because of the size and relatively young nature of the company, was able to continue impressing investors, churning out revenue growth, and boosting optimism. But most of the hardships for NFI Group are relatively behind them now, highlighted by some pretty strong results in its most recent quarterly report. So NFI Group posted quarterly results not too long ago that resulted in revenue of 583 million US dollars and adjusted earnings per share of 12 cents US dollars per share. This is a beat on revenue estimates and actually a significant beat on earnings expectations. In fact, most analysts had this company posting a loss when in fact it posted its third quarter of profitability after three challenging quarters in the midst of the pandemic. The company also came out of the quarter with a backlog of just over $4 billion and active bids are up nearly 50% since the previous quarter. This is a strong sign that municipalities and governments are again spending on transit. In terms of zero emission and fuel cell electric buses, they now make up over 16% of the company's total backlog and made up 8% of its most recent quarter. The company stated it is well on track to hitting 20 to 25% of total deliveries coming from its ZEB zero emission battery and fuel cell products. It also reaffirmed its EBITDA guidance, stating that it should be able to close the year out with a potential 50% improvement over fiscal 2020. So it seems pretty clear that a turnaround is in the works, but when we look to forward estimates, is the company worth the cost you're paying right now? So when we look to NFI on a forward basis, there hasn't been that much positivity all year. In fact, this is a company that is trading at pretty rich evaluations. However, we are still in somewhat of a pandemic and the company is likely going to face hardships in 2021 as well. If investors are patient and look towards 2022 and 2023, the company seems to be trading at a pretty steep bargain. In fact, it's only trading at you know around 18 times and around 13 times times 2022 and 2023 earnings respectively. So pretty much what this tells me is a lot of investors are willing to look past this year and instead into the future where the company's backlog
backlog is growing and its prospects are starting to look optimistic. Most analysts do have a buy rating placed on NFI. In fact, out of the 10 analysts covering the company, only one has a hold rating and price targets in the $32 range technically don't provide that much upside from today's levels. But it's also important to note that if the company has more quarters like this recent one, it is very possible that these targets do get raised. So this isn't a company that is trading at slam dunk levels in terms of valuations, but this does provide the opportunity to outperform over the medium to long term if it can get back to 100% of its pre-COVID operations and continue to take advantage of the momentum in the EV and emissionless vehicle sector. So that's pretty much it. Two stocks you can add to your watch list today in TFI and NFI, both pretty strong companies that are growing at a pretty decent clip. Uh, NFI poses a little bit more risk with the fourth wave, potential fourth wave coming up. We don't want to see further shutdowns. But that's it for the video, everybody. I really hope you like this format. Again, you have to head down below, comment on this video. Let us know if you like these style of videos or the other style we typically do. Stay tuned for the launch of our podcast eventually here, a podcast that is going to cover exclusively Canadian stocks, uh, Canadian markets in general, Canadian earnings. And also we are organizing some way to do YouTube lives for uh, free YouTube watchers and then some exclusive ones for premium members only. And finally, if you are looking to get into premium, I have left a link to a big discount in the description below. Not only will you get a uh, discount to premium, but you will also lock in that lower price for life as long as the subscription stays active before we raise prices in the next month or so. But stay tuned for more great Canadian content, and we'll see you next time.